Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to one of my convention videos. Yes, I'm going to BW Expo Bus Week here in Moscow. Yes, there's actually a convention <laughs> dedicated to buses and I've got myself a press pass and I'm heading on inside. So anytime you come to these conventions, they always have these big boards out the front so you can take a photo against the sign. And then they've got these kind of like maps that tell you uh, which companies are here, which exhibitors have their little booths. And unfortunately for me, everything is Russian. So I'm pretty sure we know some of the bus brands though. Kamaz, Gaz, Maz. So let's go see what we can see inside, shall we? Every time I come to these events, I always feel very underdressed. Everybody's in suits, ties, jackets and then here I am in my polo shirt and just casually walking on in. Now just walking on inside this is not a particularly big convention compared to a lot of the conventions that are held here. This is Corker City Convention Center which is a huge place let me tell you but I imagine there's not so many brands of buses in the world that they uh, can fill up multiple convention halls, but let's go see some of these different types of buses. One of the first ones I've come across is this huge Kamaz here. Have a look at this thing. It's like an off-road all-wheel drive bus. Check out how high the uh, suspension is. This is a beast of a bus. It's absolutely huge. Now I'm just noticing on the side here, there's the Gazprom branding on the side of the bus. So I imagine this is gas powered and it does actually have eco gas sign right at the back here. So pretty sure they kind of co-branding. Let's go see if we can get on board, shall we? Check this thing out. This is just a beast of a bus. I imagine they use this off road or kind of in the country regions of Moscow and Russia, probably not so much in Moscow, but Looks pretty neat. Yeah, it's not a very big bus, but it's very comfortable. It's actually got built-in seat belts as well, which is not normal on a lot of the public buses in Russia, but it's got nice space. Now, I really do hope you're watching this just to see buses, because I've got no knowledge about these different buses, but <laughs> they look pretty cool. This is one of these low rider ones where they've got the gas lift inside, which sort of bring them down to people. People who have uh, kind of inability to climb up onto the bus. So it's very nice. They've always got these enclosed cabs on the buses in Russia. Pretty sure the uh, bus driver just wants to stay nice and warm. But have a look here, just walking through. There's some people waiting for the bus to go home. Well, hi, the Rasputi. Then here we have another bus by Kamaz. They're basically uh, the whole front of the exhibition here. So let's have a look. This is kind of neat. It's kind of got a different uh, entrance for the driver here. I don't know how much space he needs, but he's got plenty of room. Let's have a walk through. Oh, nice and spacious. This has the spot here for the prams. Oh, this is one of the bending buses too. So. We've got all the way through to the back of the bus here. Everybody's just like me, we're all bus fans. We're all coming to check out the different buses. Oh, very nice. And this is the uh, tap and go system. It's obviously not activated now, but this is what you'd use if you're catching the bus. Yeah, this is my favorite seat in the bus right here. Anytime I catch these buses in Moscow, let me show you why. Now the first reason I really like this spot is because it's got USB and type C power cables right here, but it's also the best view in the house. So you can sit here and enjoy your whole journey. And you've got these big glass windows on either side and you can enjoy your bus ride, even if it is in traffic sometimes, but it's always a nice view if you're taking a bus through some of the different parts of Russia. Just walking around, I think it's really interesting just how many people have come to look at buses. And are they kind of geeking out at buses? Are they, I don't know, are they looking to buy buses? It's just interesting how many people 
come from all over Russia just to look at different models of buses. And I didn't really realize there was even this many in Russia. Have a look at all of these along the walkway here. I really do hope this is interesting uh, by the time you kind of get to watch this and it's uh, kind of a good insight into some of the different conventions that are here in, uh, in Moscow where I live. But all these kind of uh, short range and long range buses now just come across hopefully the bus of the future or the future of Moscow region where I live now this is one of the new modern mashrutkas have a look at this it's actually electric check out the engine space right here all electric how neat is that all right and let's have a walk around on board shall we now hopefully my local administration is watching this video and they can start ordering some of these for our local route. Now, oh, the <laughs> Rasputi. You're waiting for the bus? No, just relaxing here. Relax, oh, nice. So yeah. <laughs> now the only thing with this Mashrutka is there's only 10 seats in it. So what's gonna happen when I wanna get a ride home? There's gonna be only standing room. The driver's got plenty of space. But as for the passengers, it says they're 10 seated and three standing. And then you've got the one space here for a wheelchair. But it's a very nice bus though. There's a couple of nice guys here waiting for the bus home. <laughs> and then right next to it, there's an even bigger Mashrutka. This one's even nicer. Maybe this is the one I want to get for my bus route where I live. Lots of space on this one. And I can even have the front seat if I'm very lucky, depending on how many people will be on board. But this bus seats 21 people. That's always nice. 21 people. Mashrutka style, that's about 41 people. But here's some more people waiting for buses. Lots more space on this one. So I thought I'd take you a walk around on one of the new electric buses, which is very popular here in Moscow. And this is actually a bus that's already in service in Moscow, but this is the newer kind of modern version of it. You can see the driver is here riding for his ride. Hopefully he's not using his phone when he drives, but I think everyone's just hanging out. But the one thing that's kind of cool about these, as I was kind of pointed out, is they don't have any floor attachments. Can you see how there's a big open space so there's more storage, the seats can be adaptive and of course I'm going to show this in almost every bus. USBs everywhere you sit. How cool is that? And so this is all electric bus so they're uh, charging at different points around the city and this one is the newer modern version. Now if you've ever been to Moscow you'll probably see that most of the buses do have all these features built in, but you just rarely see them getting used. But these are actually the kneeling buses as well, so they'll actually lower down. You can see how low the clearance is already. But they've basically got an air ride system or a kind of a gas lift system that lets them come down to the street to let people on and off who have got prams, strollers, I guess wheelchairs and different things. So as we walk around a little bit, we go from gas to Maz. It's interesting how similar some of the names are of the different companies, but it depends on where you live in Russia. Some of these buses are already in operation. Uh, the local administrations kind of buy the different brands based on their needs and the distances the buses have to ride. But have a look. Nice uh, looking bus here. Now it's probably a little bit hard to see here on this bus, but you can just see the uh, telescopic arms here. So this can ride on the electric cable systems in different cities around Russia, uh, which is kind of neat. But essentially it allows you to charge the buses as well and use them as an electric bus, or they can ride on the electric cable system. Now walking around all these different buses, it's kind of, a little bit interesting for me because you know I catch the bus I don't really pay attention too much to the different 
uh, kind of seating arrangements and how many spaces there are. But it's uh, kind of interesting to see them all in one place and all the different kind of layouts that they've got. Now, I didn't have to walk much further down the uh, convention here to find some Chinese buses. Yu Tong. And there's some of these long range buses here. I guess I kind of call them long range buses. How big are the wing mirrors? I just find these kind of just look really strange how far they hang out over the bus. But China is in the house. So there's not just Russian produced buses, there's some from other countries here also. And of course the distances that cover over Russia is it's kind of required to have these long range buses really. So we go from Yu Tong and then over here we've got King Long. Now it's kind of uh, interesting they've got the different uh, companies. Let's have a look around the Chinese bus. I think they just look very similar to me. Looks a little bit more uh, plasticky if that's the right word to say. And uh, walking through here. It's got a lot of steps and <laughs> a lot more to manage to walk around and not as accessible, but Chinese bus. And then how futuristic does this one look? This is Asia Star, which has got a bit of a different look to it. Finished all in gold. Got the nice wood finish inside. Now, I don't know how interesting I can make bus tour videos, but it's very high seated. Well, like we're sitting up on the roof of the bus almost. But uh, yeah, nice seats though. Big reclining seats. I'm just wondering, is it even possible to make a bus convention video interesting? <laughs> um, let me know, I don't know. Apart from walking around them and looking at them, I don't know what else I can do to sort of uh, perk up the video. And then I found another company here. This one is Futon. Or do you think it's the Adidas of buses? Do you think that's Adidas looking sound sideways? Or do you reckon it's futon as in comfortable bed and comfortable chairs inside? So just in case I want to order one of these, I need to get a BJG1220U8MKBA2. Now, you'd think they'd come up with a shorter name for the bus, wouldn't you, than that very long model number. Walking on inside, it feels like you're in an aeroplane. How similar do these seats look to the aeroplane flights that you take? Got all the curtains up as well, so I guess maybe we're gonna have a sleep in here later. And finally, I've found one of the buses that I recognize from where I live here in Moscow region, Golden Dragon. Now, I see lots of these on the road actually, and I'm curious now after finding one, uh, what the new version of the bus looks like. And for some reason, Bruce Lee's on the side of the bus as well. I wonder what his uh, brand affiliation is <laughs> with the bus company. Maybe it's like Bruce Lee's long distant family members that are brand ambassadors. I always find catching these buses, it's just very awkward to get on. The seating is like very close together and it's, uh, they're comfortable buses, but they're uh, not overly comfortable uh, for long distances. And every time I catch my local bus when I get on one of these as well, the seats are always folded all the way back. And the person who sort of sits in front of you doesn't want to put their chair forward or the, the uh, latch doesn't work or something like that. So after looking at the Photon with the incredibly long model number, we've got the ZT34, much easier to Remember the model number if you want to order one or buy a whole fleet of buses for your town. Just give me a ZT34. And then walking on inside, again, buses look like buses. I just think some of these uh, Chinese ones are a little bit more simplified in their design. They don't have fancy buttons. They don't have the USB charging points. They've got much less comfier chairs if that's really a factor for you. Now I guess I found where all the bus fanatics are hanging out. They've got a kind of a lecture here 
and they have these open forums where they just talk about buses and I see where the bus industry is going, I guess. I don't know. Uh, there's a whole series of guys here just sort of talking about buses. So walking around the back section of the bus expo here, there's all the kind of additional exhibitors. And I really wonder what all the extra things are you can get for a bus or a, I don't know, a bus fleet. I find it kind of fascinating, this uh, expo. I guess now I know where I can order one of those bus timetable systems that they've got on the uh, bus stops in Moscow. I can get one of these uh, for my local bus stop where I live. Then you can customize it with all the different routes and the arrival times. And how about changing the seats on the bus? We can get even modern seats. Different colors, different patterns. So yeah, you can buy yourself a bus and get improved seating. And then once you've got your bus uh, in your bus depot, I guess you can get improved air conditioning and heating. I guess these will be heating for the winter in Russia. In Australia, we'd need these for air conditioning. So I guess you can get bigger units with more fans. Basically improves the comfort of the passengers inside. And whoever thought there was a supplier for window shades just for buses? Yeah, all of these different kind of suppliers the whole way down this side of the convention here have different kind of things and additions to the buses. These guys over here have got seats and different radiators and heating elements for the buses, but so many different add-ons you can get for your bus. Now, I wonder how many people realized that in the world that there's a bus door company that basically supplies the electric doors that open and close on the buses, I guess all the trains as well. They've got these on some of the trains in Moscow. You can also buy the, I guess these are the kill switches or the override buttons. Yeah, whoever knew somebody like this existed. I mean, how, who are you going to sell these to? I guess to the bus companies that are here. I guess they kind of switch business cards with each other. Now, do you know what I'm really curious about when I walk around this event today is, do you reckon there's a lot of the bus drivers that have come here to have a look at the new buses? I wonder if you can uh, spot them in the background of some of the scenes. Obviously, there's a lot of the companies here and different administrations throughout Russia that have come to this kind of once a year convention, but I wonder how many bus drivers are here today just uh, kind of having a look at what their next model is gonna be in the coming future. Now, it's probably a little hard to see from here again, but if you look right here, you can actually see these charging arms that come out from the roof of the bus, which basically plug in to a charging station and allows the bus to charge remotely. So rather than having to go back to the depots, they'll have different charging points around Moscow, Moscow region where I live, allowing the buses to charge up. You can also see on this bus ride here, these kind of telescopic rods. What do you reckon the technical word is for these things that extend out now? I'm pretty sure in Moscow, where I'm from, they don't have these anymore at all, but in different cities around Russia, they do. So there's still a thing that's kind of required, depending on the region that these buses will be kind of brought into. I do hope this video has been interesting. Uh, it's not a huge convention uh, compared to a lot that I've been to where they just go for, <laughs> go forever, it feels like. I guess the bus industry is a lot smaller than what we think, but yet there's still so many different companies here. Yeah, these uh, convention videos are always interesting to put together. So I think I've narrowed down all the people that have come here to the event. I think it's kind of a combination of three different people. So there's the different companies who want to basically buy and sell buses to each other, I guess, or they want to trade or I'm not sure what they're doing, but there's obviously the uh, different administrations, different government kind of uh, entities around Russia who want to come and look at the new buses and maybe buy them to expand their fleet. 
And then there is all of the bus enthusiasts. Now, somebody mentioned about me saying geeks is not overly an appropriate word, but I think there is a lot of uh, bus geeks that are here having a look at them. Check out this stand as well. There's a windscreen washer guy. There's a supplier of the, uh, I guess, the mechanisms for washing the windows on buses, the wiper blades. How interesting is that? There's a, kind of a different supplier here. So I guess if you've kind of bought your bus and you're not happy with the wiper blades, there's a guy here that'll help you uh, put new ones on your bus. And right here by the entrance, I kind of walked past this not realizing, but there's another one of these electric door bus uh, companies here. And have a look at all these guys that are just interested in the door opening on a bus and all the techn technology associated with it. I guess if you're kind of uh, into buses, this would be your thing to check out. Now, I do remember in a few of the comments, some people sort of pointing out and asking about people who use wheelchairs and people that have limited mobility and how do they get around <laughs> Russia? Now, to be very, very honest, there is, to be, to, in my opinion, my opinion here, it's not very, very wheelchair friendly, Russia as a whole. But they've got one of these buses here that's got the, I guess the ramp right here. I don't know what they would call this. That can kind of load into the back of this sort of minibus. But they do have them in Russia. You just don't see them very much. And I mean, in Australia, these are very, very common place. But in Russia, we just, we're just not too ability friendly, I guess, is, if that's the right words. I think walking around the back here, I found all of the bus enthusiasts all hanging out together. Have a look at this, we can sit down and have tea and coffee, talk about buses, and it's, again, it's just interesting. Perhaps this guy here is a little bit famous in the uh, bus world, I'm not sure, but people want to get photos with different people here uh, around the back of the buses. There's always going to be a back section somewhere, right, where everyone's sort of hanging out, and I think it's right here. Now, if there is someone from Russia watching, can you please tell me in your city where you live, do you have buses like this? Because I'm pretty sure that short of out in Siberia and the far east of Russia, I'm not sure where they would use these as a public transport. So just one more time, if the local administration of Narofominsk or Aprilivka is watching this, I'm pretty sure I don't have too many Aprilivka uh, viewers and subscribers to my channel. This is the bus we want to get. This is the one we want to replace, the 490 from Salarevo to Aprilivka. If we can get one of these, I'll be very, very happy. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you for watching Traveling with Russell. I want to thank you for coming on this walk around of a bus convention. Now, I know these aren't very popular on the channel, going to different conventions, but I like coming to them. I think it's cool to kind of check out the new technology, what the next kind of thing is going to be. And conventions seem to be a big thing in Russia, so why not come to them? All right, everybody, if you liked it, I guess you could give it a thumbs up. I'm sure someone will give it a thumbs down. You watched a whole bus convention video and I don't know, it wasn't to your liking. I'm not sure what to say, but yeah. What's interesting question for you is people who catch buses, if you're watching now, do you pay attention to where the bus is made? What brand of bus, you know, which country it was manufactured in? Let me know in the comments if that's ever a factor. Now, even from me, from an Australian point of view, I'm trying to think. I only really know Mercedes and MAN as uh, bus companies that operate in Australia. But until I come to this today, I didn't know there were so many different ones. So thanks, everybody. I put another video for you to watch right after this one. You can check it out if you like. And I'll see you in another video. Bye, everybody.